Hello, my name is Brad Neal with the University of Indianapolis. Today we're going to be talking uh, about the final section of the measurements chapter in our book. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So your reading assignment for this section is uh, six point, or I'm sorry, 1.6, the mathematical treatment of measurement results. And we're going to go over some of the key highlights uh, of the chapter now, as well as work some problems. The link to this reading assignment will also be in the description on the YouTube uh, video page. So what is dimensional analysis? If you've had a chemistry class before, you've probably used this. And if you haven't uh, had a chemistry class before, that's a-okay. We're going to teach you uh, with the reading and with some examples here. You might be familiar with this being called the factor label method. They work the exact same way. They convey the same kind of information. They're a mechanism um, for us to, in essence, convert units from one unit to another using conversion factors. Because we're trying to convert one unit to another, we have to have our conversion factors down. So on the screen here uh, beside me, this is a list of very common conversion factors that you'll be using throughout this course. I want to highlight, though, a couple of things for you. So here, uh, and this comes directly from your reading, these are a variety of conversion factors of length. Specifically, though, these are all converting the uh, either the metric or SI unit into an imperial or US unit. So a meter to yards. The meter would be the SI unit. The yard would be the uh, imperial or what we think of as the US unit. Right below that, Inches to centimeters, again, now we're just converting the imperial to the SI, we, so we flipped which way we're going. But because this is an equal sign, really we can write this out as a fraction, and we'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. A key take home here is, these are all just converting one length to another length unit, all going from SI to imperial. You really only need to remember one of these as long as then you remember the unit conversions of imperial to imperial so like how many inches there are in a foot how many feet there are in one yard how many feet there are in a mile how many yards there are in a mile if you have those down then the hard what i think of personally is the hard part the going from the imperial to the SI unit, all you have to have is one of these memorized. And the same thing works here for all of our volumes and our masses. So personally, the ones that I try to always have memorized because they're just used so frequently, looking them up just takes too much time. It slows me down. I memorize the one inch to 2.54 centimeters because that's an exact equivalency. There's no extra digits behind this four and the 2.54. It's exactly 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. So that's crazy powerful. I, for the most part, will remember the one liter to quarts for my volume, because if I've got this down, I can remember all of my metric to metric, SI to SI unit conversions from liters to milliliters, et cetera. And then my quartz, the imperial unit, I remember my unit conversions there. And if you don't remember your unit conversions, especially for volumes in the imperial system, so how many ounces there are in a pint, how many pints there are in a quart, how many quarts there are in a gallon, please go back and uh, make sure that you have that fresh in your mind. That needs to be top of mind, especially when we're going over the material here in chapter one. Once we get later on into the semester, we're going to be only using the SI units. So the conversion factors won't be, for the imperial, won't be as important for you to have down. 
for mass, um, I always remember the one pound equals four point or 453.59 grams because that's the one that we use. So now that we've talked about these conversion factors, we've said that dimensional analysis, the uh, factor label method is a mathematical relationship. Let's actually use this in practice and let's walk you through how to think about one of these questions. So here we go. The question is convert 4.56 feet to meters. So the first thing, the first thing we should really do is identify what is the question asking us. And the question is really asking us to convert feet, which is an imperial unit, into meters, which is an SI unit. So we need to have some equivalency to get us from imperial length measurements to SI length measurements. Because it's length to length, it's a little bit easier. We don't have to worry about changing something like from mass to volume. That requires density. That gets a little bit more tricky, but the math works the same. Here, it's straightforward. So the second thing that we need to do is now we need to figure out exactly what our conversion factor is that we're going to use to go from those imperial to the um, SI unit. And we have a bunch of different options if you think back to the previous slide. But if you'll remember, I strongly suggest that you just use this one point or I'm sorry, the one inch to 2.54 centimeter equivalency here. Because this is an equivalency, we can now write this one of two ways. We can write this as the, that fraction that we talked a little bit about in a previous video. So we can say the one inch over 2.54 centimeters, and we can rewrite our equivalency as this fraction because one inch over 2.54 centimeters is really just equal to one. Or we can say the 2.54 centimeters over one inch. Either way we write this, it's mathematically correct and we'll be able to use it to our advantage. So now that we've identified what the question is really asking us, we've identified the conversion, the proper kind of conversion that we need now it's time to start setting up the problem and start working out the math. Whenever you start this process, it's important that you always start the math expression, your, any math work you do, start with the measurement that you are given. And specifically in this problem above me, it says 4.56 feet. So we're gonna write that out, the 4.56 feet first. Now our expression that we wrote up above, that is going from inches to centimeters. And right now we're in feet. So we need to have a feet to inches somehow relationship. Feet are imperial, so are inches. And since probably elementary school, you've been pounded into your head that one foot is equal to 12 inches. Groovy. We can use the same kind of reasoning as we did above in the problem with respect to the writing our fraction. So we can say one foot over 12 inches, or we can say 12 inches over one foot. Now, we didn't right here give ourselves a lot of room. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start that at the very bottom of the screen here. I'm start my math over. Pardon my handwriting. The 4.56 feet. Now, realistically, that's 4.56 feet, but I can write that over the number one. The nice thing about writing that over the number one is one, we didn't change the number at all. Two, now we can say, okay, here were my fractions 
my expressions, our relationships. Now, my original measurement is in a fraction. What we wrote up here is in fractions. I can now just continue this on out and I can pick the one that's gonna give me the proper units in my numerator. Specifically, I want inches in that numerator so that the feet would cancel out. So I'm gonna take the 12 inches over one foot way of writing that problem. By writing the 4.56 feet over one foot, or I'm sorry, over one as we have here, this now allows us to see a little bit more easily that the feet here in our numerator cancel with the feet in our denominator. And that's really the key to the uh, factor label method dimensional analysis. We're treating those units the same way we would treat a number in terms of how stuff gets canceled in a mathematical problem. So since feet were in the numerator and we had a separate feet in the denominator, they get to cancel out. And so now the only unit that we're left with is inches. Cool, but we don't want inches as our final answer. We wanted it to be in meters. This is where we're now going to use one of our equivalencies that we have written out up above because we're in inches, imperial, it's time to go to metric. And we can do that using the relationship we have highlighted in blue and one of the expressions that we have circled in red. So, oh, running out of battery. So, the right expression to use is the one that allows us to cancel out the unit that we don't want. Because we don't want inches in our final answer, and inches right now, you know, down here in our bottom problem, is in our numerator, we should pick the expression from up top that allows us to cancel our inches. By doing this, inches now can be canceled and we're left in centimeters. Great. But the question asked us to report the answer in meters. So if we stop now, we didn't answer the question. This is where you have to have one more equivalency. So knowing your metric equivalencies, you can say one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. We can write out this equivalency as a fraction, just like we did with the feet. I'll give you a second, hit pause on the video to write out what you think the answer is, and then we'll come back. Okay, hopefully you hit pause. Um, see if your work that you tried corresponds with what we're about to do. So we've got this expression, the one meter equals 100 centimeters. Because we want the centimeters to cancel, we'll put the 100 centimeters at the bottom, and we'll put the one meter on the top. This nicely now lets us cancel out our centimeters. And when you know it, the only unit that we're left with now in our numerator, where it should be, is meters. So that tells us we've reached the end of our problem. We can now calculate everything. Before you start typing stuff into your calculator, hear me out. You want to multiply everything in your, your numerator, then you want to divide step-by-step step what's in your denominator. So specifically, we want to multiply 4.56 times 12 times 2.54 divided by 100. Okay, so we've multiplied everything that wasn't a one in our numerator, then we divided step-by-step step in our denominator by everything that wasn't a one. Then after you do all of those mathematical operations, then you hit enter. Don't hit enter until you've typed everything into your calculator. If you type in enter early, you're gonna end up with rounding errors and you're gonna get a slightly incorrect answer. Um, and a slightly incorrect answer is an incorrect answer. 
if you do what I said um, and ask nicely, you should end up with some number that looks like 1.389888. Almost there, don't forget to write your unit. Almost there, don't forget your sig figs. We talked about sig figs in a previous video. Our measurement came to us from the 4.5 feet. 4.5 feet has three significant figures in it. Every one of those is a non-zero integer. We've only done the mathematical operations of multiplication and division. The rules for sig figs for multiplication and division state you're going to use the least precise measurement and its number of sig figs for the appropriate number of sig figs that your final answer should have. So as such, we have one, two, three, the nine tells the eight to round up. So our final answer is 1.39 meters. And this is our winner winner chicken dinner. So now we've walked through with you the nuts and bolts of the dimensional analysis method, why it works, why we use it, and also an example of calculating sig figs. We're going to practice more of these kinds of problems in class together, but please make sure that you've attempted some on your own before you come into the discussion section. Also, if you don't have down your conversions, especially your SI units, your powers of 10 conversion factors down, and you have, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, those are things that we're gonna be using throughout the entire semester. So it's better to learn those now as to continuously lose points throughout the whole course uh, for not having learned those. Like I said previously, if you have any questions, please let me know and we will pick up temperature in another video. Thanks.